Alright, in this video we're going to learn a little bit about the concept of what's called a savings annuity. The idea of a savings annuity is that while compound interest is great and we'd love to put some huge amount of money into an account and just let the money sit there for a long period of time, at the end of the day most of us don't have the capabilities of making a super large one-time deposit and then just leaving it alone. Um, so the other option that we have is called a savings annuity, and this is one of the very, 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 very best ways that you can save. Um, and it's what you, your employers are going to encourage you to do in terms of like saving up for retirement accounts. And the idea is that you're going to set up kind of an automatic payment system into a savings account. And so let's look at, as an example, let's suppose that you look at your budget and you decide that you can afford to put $200 per month into savings. And so if we take this $200 and we're going to put that into savings every month into an account that is compounded monthly. And let's, I've been using 3% here a lot, so let, we'll use that again here. Let's suppose that we're looking at something that's paying 3% compounded monthly. Now, it's not always going to tell you compounded monthly, but the fact is, is that every month you're going to be putting money into the account, and so they're going to recompound the money based on what your new savings account is. So it may not actually say compounded monthly, but if it says that you're adding things $200 per month, then you're going to kind of treat it like it's compounded monthly. So um, just kind of be aware of that as you go through. Um, so this is our kind of our situation. Let's suppose that we want to do this for the next 10 years. And we're interested in seeing, so this is kind of our, our savings plan idea um, for, our, for our child, similar to what we had before. We're going to be saving for 3% um, in, a, in an account that's earning 3% every month, compound, or 3% annual interest compounded monthly. We're going to do it for 10 years because that's when our child is going to be out of the nest. But we're going to just put in $200 a month. And we'd like to end up, we'd like to see how much money we actually end up with in the account after that period of time. Um, because we're making what's called a repeated deposit, we're doing $200 every single month over and over and over again, um, what we're going to use is we're going to use the annuity formula. So the annuity formula was given like this in the textbook. It looks like P of N, so the balance of the account after N years, is equal to D, which is the amount of my regular deposit, times by 1 plus R is my interest rate, divided by K, which is my compounding period, to the NK, so that many years times um, the compounding period, minus 1, close the parentheses, divided by... Um, R over K. And so this is uh, my little slightly downhill twisty version of that formula. All right. So if this is my formula, what I'd like to do is I'd like to analyze this particular situation here. I am interested in finding out the value of my account after 10 years. So I'm looking for P10. In order to find that, I'm going to have to first start with what the amount of my regular deposit is, which in this case it's $200 per month. And I'm going to times that by 1 plus my interest rate, which is 0 0.03 in decimal form, divided by my compounding period, which is 12 because it's monthly. Then this is going to be taken to the 10 times 12. So 10 is the number of years, N, times 12 is the number of compounding periods in a year, which is K, minus 1, all of that is all in parentheses, divided by, and then in parentheses I have R again, which is 0 0.03, divided by my compounding period, which is 12. So if I want to figure out what the balance is, I have to do this whole big mess on my calculator. Now, you can do this in a single step by typing things in. Um, I'm going to show you what that would look like here, um, typing it in on the calculator. Using the parentheses is very, very important. Really, the only extra thing that you have to remember is that you need to add an extra set of parentheses around the exponent to make sure that things all work out okay. Let me show you what it looks like in one step here, and then I'll show you a good way to kind of double check yourself by doing it in smaller portions following the order of operations. Um, so here, if I'm going to just type it how I see it, what I do is I've got to take the 200 and then make sure that you use two sets of parentheses and then it's 1 plus 
0 0.03 divided by 12. Close the parentheses. And then we want to take that whole expression there, that um, 1 point plus 0 0.03 divided by 12. I want to take that whole thing to the 10 times 12 power. So you hit the caret button to bring you up to the main, to that upper level. And I'm going to do 10 times 12. And then I'm going to close the parentheses. Um, in these problems, if, if you have one of these um, silver editions or TI-84 pluses, it's going to be up here. Notice how there's like a little right arrow. Hit that right arrow to get you back down to the main level. If you're on an older calculator, you'll see the caret button. This will already be on the main level, so you don't have to do this extra push to the right thing. Um, but once you hit the other side of that 12 in your parentheses and you're back on the main level, you're going to do minus 1. Now notice that this in this calculator, it all shows up as on the main level. Otherwise, it would look like caret 10 times 12, close parentheses, and then minus the 1 from there. Now, I've got it next here. I've got to close the parentheses for the top, and then I want to divide it by, and then I want to put this in parentheses on the bottom. Um, make sure that you just follow that format with the double parentheses here, one here, one here, and then one down here, and then just make sure that you do that n times k in parentheses in the exponent as well. Um, so here I'm back to divided by 0 0.03 divided by 12 is in parentheses. Close the parentheses, hit enter, and I should have what the balance of my account is, um, which says 10 years later, if I deposit $200 every month after 10 years, my account will be worth $27,000, $27,900. Forty-eight dollars and twenty-three cents at the end of that period of time, which is pretty awesomely amazing. Okay, so that's how much you'll have in the account um, in this case ten years later. The next question: Sometimes they're going to ask you some follow-up questions. Um, one of them is, how much total money will you have put into the account? So, in terms of what your deposits are. If you want to figure out how much money you put, this is how much we have in the account. But how much did you actually deposit? Well, we did $200 deposits every month for 10 years. So $200 times by 12 for every month times by 10 for 10 years. 200 times 12 times 10 is... $24,000. So over the course of 10 years, I deposited $24,000 cash. But the value of my account ten years at the end of that 10 years was $27,948.23. Um, so the last kind of question that you're going to be asked is, what was the total amount of interest that you earned? Well, the total amount of interest is going to be the difference between what you put in and what the balance of the account is. So in this case, to find the total amount of interest, I'm going to take that $27,948.23. I'm going to subtract the $24,000 that I invested through those regular repeated deposits, and I end up with $3,948.23 in total interest that's earned over that um, over that 10-year period. So that's kind of my free money that I get for um, doing my particular investment. So that's pretty awesome. And the nice thing about this, again, with annuities, is we didn't have to come up with a big up upfront cash. I mean, yes, we paid $24,000 into the savings account over time, but it was over time. And it was done in a manageable, regular $200 per month that we could have automatically deposited into our savings account where we don't have to touch it or worry about it. So that is one type of question that you're going to have to deal with when you're solving these savings annuity problems. So let's um, I'm going to go ahead and kind of erase this situation here. And let's take a look at the other type of problem that you may be asked. And that is, let's suppose that you have a certain amount of money that you want to save up. And you're wondering how much money you'd have to put in. So we're doing some planning. How much deposit would you have to make in order to end up with the amount of money that you'd like to have at the end? So let me erase things here. And we'll give that a whirl. OK, so here's a different kind of problem. Let's suppose that we have, um, let's go back and try this problem again. Let's suppose that we have a $20,000 savings goal. Um, and we'd like to have this amount of money at the end of 10 years. And 
and we'll say that we're earning 3%. We'll stick with monthly here. Um, and I think that's all the information that we need. So um, in this particular problem, what we're looking for is how much money would we have to save every single month if we wanted to end up with $20,000 at the end of it. Um, and hopefully that will be a more manageable chunk. So if we plug everything in here, P of N is going to be what's the balance of my account at the end of at the end of the 10 years of investment. So in this example, that's going to be $20,000 equals, and then D is how much I'm depositing every month. That's what I'm trying to figure out. And then we put everything else in here. So on the top here, I'm going to have 1 plus R is 3%, so 0 0.03. Um, K, I'm still doing monthly, monthly, so I do 12. Um, again, keep in mind that if you're doing any other um, compounding period, that that would, if it's quarterly, you'll use four. If it's annually, you use one or whatever. Um, up here, the capital N is the number of years, which in this case is 10 again, times the compounding period, which is still 12. And then we're going to subtract one. That's all on the top. And then everything is divided by R divided by K, which again is that 0 0.03 over 12. So this is where I'm kind of starting out. Now this time I'd like to solve for D, and D is um, on the top of this fraction. And so there's a couple of different ways that you can do it. Really the simplest way that you can do it is just simply to figure out, notice that it's D times this and then it divided by this answer. Um, because it's, So basically because it's all of this divided by this, we can just figure out what all of this number is and do this in um, our calculator, and then substitute that value in times d equals 20,000. So that's going to be the simplest way for us to solve it mathematically. So what I'm going to need to do here is I'm going to need to evaluate this entire expression. As I start, what I'm going to do is, um, I'll turn my calculator back on. If I'm entering it just the way I see it, I'm going to use that double set of parentheses. Uh, 1 plus 0 0.03 divided by 12. close one set of parentheses, and then take it to, so use the exponent, put the 10 times 12 in parentheses after the exponent, and then close the parentheses. Um, if you're actually physically above the level, use that right arrow to get down to the main level, and then we want a minus 1. Close the parentheses after that, and then divide by, in parentheses, 0 0.03 divided by 12. Um, again, this is a great one to do playing along with your calculator next to you. Make sure you get the answers um, that I do. In this case, I get 139.74. So what I have now is 20,000 equals D times, and then that this whole big mess here came out to be 139.74. If I want to solve for D, I can divide by that 139.74 number and I will get how much I am expected to deposit every month in order to um, make my savings goal. So I take $20,000, and I'm going to divide it by my previous answer, that 139. Again, you can retype it, or you can use second negative to get take that divided by the last answer. And in this case, I end up with, for a small $143.12 every month at the end of 10 years, I will have met my $20,000 savings goal. So that's the other thing that you can actually do. Um, if you, so anyway, that should, that should get you through most of your homework in terms of the savings annuity portion of it. Um, if you are having some trouble with your calculator and you're not getting the answers that I am, um, a lot of times People have problems with parentheses and stuff like that. You can always follow order of operations and just do the pieces that are in parentheses one piece at a time and kind of work your way out. So for example, if we do, were to do this problem in calculator chunks, what we could do first is first do what's inside the inside most parentheses. So you can do just 1 plus 0 0.03 divided by 12. And so in that inside most parentheses, I have 1.005. Now, if you're doing it this way, so I'm just doing what's in the red box here. If I'm doing it this way, it's real important to not 
cut decimals off. I mean, write them all out. Um, don't round too soon. Rounding makes a huge difference when we're dealing with finances because we're using exponents and things and small decimals so things get out of control really fast. Um, the exponent here, this 10 times 12 is in the power. Just go ahead and do 10 times 12 so you only have a single number power here. Um, when I do 10 times 12, I get 120. So what I have now is 1.0025 to the 120, and then I want a minus 1 from that. On the bottom, I have 0 0.03 divided by 12. So do those, what's in each of those parentheses right off the bat to get your life looking a lot better. In this case, that's 0 0.0025. Now we can do the top and then the bottom. Here I want to take 1.0025 to the 120th power. Use the caret button for your exponent again to the 120th power. Hit enter. That's 1.349 blah, 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 blah. Then I want to take that answer and subtract 1. So you can do second answer, take that last answer, subtract 1. When I do that, I get 0.34935 blah, 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 blah. And I want to divide that answer by 0 0.0025. So I can take that divide by 0 0.0025 and I get my final solution of 139.7414 which if you notice that's the same thing that we got doing it by plugging everything carefully in the parentheses once. Um, so do the inside, do the power, then take it to a power, then subtract one, then take that answer and divide it by whatever you got doing this little division on the bottom. Uh, it works the same way if you're having trouble with doing the single step thing on your calculator. You can break it down into those pieces in that order and you'll get the same thing. Um, so that's my last little piece of advice there for you. If you have any questions on the discussion boards, please post.